Hey guys, so today we'll be talking about dengue. We've made this video as simple as possible and in a comprehensive way so that nothing misses out. So stay with us till the end of the video. This video has been divided into following headings. First of all, we'll be talking about the introduction of the disease, the epidemiology, the mode of transmission, the clinical features that includes the signs and symptoms, the clinical course of the disease, the laboratory diagnosis and the management of the disease. So what is dengue? Dengue fever, also known as breakbone fever, is a mosquito-borne tropical disease caused by dengue virus. Tropical countries are the countries near to the equator in which the temperature remains high. These parts include India, the Thorai Belt of Nepal, Africa and South America. This disease is named after the virus that causes it, called as the dengue virus. So get this thing clear that it's not mosquito that actually causes the disease, but it's the virus. As you can see in this epidemiological triad, there are these three factors that play an important role in epidemiological disease. Those are the agent, host and the environment. Let's talk about the causative agent. The agent is a dengue virus and the dengue virus is of four subtypes. Dengue virus 1, dengue virus 2, 3 and 4. All the serotypes cause the same illness. Also, it should be noted that once a virus infects a person, the person becomes immune to the particular subtype. And this is the reason why, in a lifetime, a person can possibly get dengue for a maximum of 4 times. But we should also keep in mind that if the infections are from multiple serotypes, it can lead to severe form of illness like dengue hemorrhagic fever and dengue shock syndrome, which I'll be talking about in a while. Talking about the host factors, the children are more commonly affected than the adults, but it's the adults that gets more severe form of the disease. And the next thing is that females are more commonly affected than males. Talking about the environmental factors, this disease is more prevalent in tropical zone which is the area lying near to equator as I had already mentioned. These areas are mostly the areas of hot climate. So this map shows the geographical distribution of the disease, the dengue disease and according to WHO, more than 125 countries in the world are known to be dengue endemic. So endemic means an epidemic that is restricted to a certain area. And it's been estimated that more than 2.5 billion people are living in these endemic areas. So you can clearly estimate what threats can arise when it would potentially outbreak. Now let's talk about the mode of transmission. This disease is transmitted by the bite of an infected mosquito, the Aedes mosquito. So the Aedes mosquito becomes infective by feeding on a patient who is suffering from dengue. A man becomes infective from the fifth day of illness and the incubation period for this disease is two to seven days. An incubation period is the time between the infection and the onset of symptoms which in case of dengue is 2 to 7 days. So what's a vector? A vector is any agent that transmits the disease. So in this case, the vector is a mosquito, the Aedes mosquito. These mosquitoes lay eggs in clean water during end of the rainy season. And this is exactly why the cases of dengue rises at the time of the month in the endemic area. So there's this thing called as trans-ovarian transmission, which means that the transmission occurs from mother mosquito to the eggs that she has laid 
while in OB position or in egg laying position. So this graph shows us the phases of dengue fever. The course of infection can be divided into three phases as you can see in this diagram. The first phase or the febrile phase and the other phases are the critical and the recovery phase. The symptoms go side by side along with the ongoing phase. The first or the febrile phase involves high fever about over 104 degree Fahrenheit. So like every other viral fever, there is generalized body pain and headache. In the second or the critical phase, there is leakage of plasma fluid from the blood vessels and that fluid might accumulate in the body spaces like abdomen and lung cavity. So where there is depletion of blood in circulation, the blood supply to the vital organs is decreased. The recovery phase occurs next with the reabsorption of the leakage fluid into the bloodstream. In this phase, people might experience seizures, altered level of consciousness and slow heartbeat than normal. And this phase usually lasts for about 2 to 3 days. The clinical course of dengue fever varies in different individuals and can range from asymptomatic to potentially life-threatening forms like dengue shock syndrome. So we can say that it's variable. In the asymptomatic forms, the individual does not even know that he is having the disease which is good for him but bad for the others because he can be a source of infection for the other people and the other can get infected. The next is the symptomatic forms in which some individuals can have simple fever that is undifferentiated from other types of viral infections and which is why it's called as undifferentiated fever. And the next type is the dengue fever syndrome which can either be with bleeding tendency or hemorrhagic or without bleeding tendency. And this bleeding tendency usually depends upon the number of platelet counts in the body. Platelets are the blood cells that play a major role in clotting and stops bleeding. The other severe form is hemorrhagic fever in which the bleeding occurs spontaneously and it is the severe form which can either be with shock or without shock. If it leads to shock, it's called as dengue shock syndrome which is a potential life-threatening condition. And let me tell you that shock is a medical emergency and in this case, shock can be due to excessive hemorrhage or blood loss, leading to impairment of the blood supply in the vital organs. Further, there are other types in which multiple organs can be affected, called as expanded Dengue syndrome or isolated organopathy. So few diagnostic tests can be carried out to rule out if it's Dengue or not. The first test includes a blood test which reveals decrease in the immunity providing WBCs or the white blood cells and also the most important thing that you can see is your decreased platelet count that plays a major role in the blood clotting. The next test is the PCR or the polymerase chain reaction which helps us to detect virus particle in the body. It's quite a sensitive test. If a person gets the virus his body starts producing antibodies against the virus, which too can be detected in the blood. The disease might further lead to deranged liver enzymes for which we can also carry out liver function tests. The deranged liver enzymes can signify the severe form of illness and that is when the dengue causes shock in patients, called as dengue shock syndrome. Now this is the important thing that you need to know. There are seven warning signs of dengue. The first one is a severe abdominal pain or tenderness and persistent vomiting. The pain is present since the liver is enlarged and this condition is called as hepatomegaly. You can also notice red spots or patches on the skin. These red spots or patches denote that you are bruising really easily. And this is due to decreased number of platelets in your circulation. 
you can notice bleeding from your nose or gums that is called as nasal bleeding or epistaxis and gum bleeding you may vomit out blood and you may pass black terry stools patients occasionally might feel drowsy or become irritable easily you might notice that your hands and feet or your extremities might feel pale and really cold and this is due to decreased amount of blood in your circulation so if you have any of these signs rush to your nearest hospital as soon as possible now we'll be talking about the treatment of the dengue since dengue fever is caused by a virus there's no specific medicine or antibiotics to treat it but for typical dengue the treatment is purely concerned with relief of the symptoms called as a symptomatic treatment Rest and fluid intake for adequate hydration is important. Aspirin and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or the NSAIs should only be taken under a doctor's supervision because of the possibility of the worsening bleeding complications. Codeine and other morphine derivatives can be given for severe headache and body pain. Now, how can you stay safe from this condition? So, to protect yourself, you need to stay away from heavily populated residential area as far as possible. Use mosquito repellents even while staying indoors. And when outdoors, wear long sleeve shirts and long pants that helps you keep away from the mosquitoes. Make sure that your windows and door screens are secure and free of holes. If the sleeping areas are not screened or air conditioned, you can use mosquito nets. That's all for today. Hoping that it was informative one. If you do like the video, give it a thumbs up and leave a subscription down below. Till then, made it, made it for you.